was um, doing some research for the last story that I did on the missing woman, Denise Wells. This story came up in the re- in the searches as I was doing some research. This is also from the Crime Wire. Leah Roberts, missing person case in Washington State. Leah Roberts vanished under mysterious circumstances while taking a soul-searching road trip. When free-spirited, Leah Roberts, age 23, made the impulsive choice to go on a cross-country road trip alone, her friends and family were concerned. She left behind a cryptic, although upbeat note with enough money to cover her rent and other expenses for a month. She left Durham, North Carolina on March 9, 2000. Leah made few stops along the way. Instead, she drove directly to Washington State over the course of four days. Her ultimate destination was apparently Desolation Peak near Mount Baker, a location that she mentioned to one of her friends during a discussion. Her journey would soon come to a mysterious end. On March 18th, a couple out for a jog discovered Leah's 1993 Jeep Cherokee wrecked at the bottom of a steep embankment in a wooded area near Canyon Creek Road. Some aspects of the scene were bizarre, such as the fact that several articles of clothing were found tied to trees and sticks nearby. Many of Leah's belongings were strewn around the area, but the young woman herself had vanished. What happened to Leah Roberts? Here's a little background on her. She was the youngest of three children. She was born in 1976 in Durham, North Carolina. When she was a teenager, her father was diagnosed with a life-threatening respiratory illness, and this would be the first of many hardships that the family would suffer. After graduating high school, Leah decided to attend North Carolina State and majored in anthropology and Spanish. In 1997, Leah's mother died suddenly from heart disease. And in another unfortunate turn of events, Leah was in a serious car accident in 1998, which resulted in a shattered femur and a punctured lung. To help her leg heal, a metal rod was inserted. And despite these setbacks, she came out of her recovery with a new cess for life, telling her sister that she felt born again. But she suffered yet another heartbreak when her father died on April the 19th, 1999. Losing both her parents in such a short period of time really affected Leah. Her family described her as being lost. Leah dropped out of college just three months shy of getting her degree. She learned how to play guitar and began to write poetry and took up photography. She often went to local coffee houses to write poetry and engage in deep discussions about the meaning of life with new friends she met there. From the last conversation we had, we were talking about Dharma bums and about how Jack Kerouac was on the desolation peak, taking in all of the beauty. Janine Quiller said that Leah spoke often about novelist Jack Kerouac and taking a road trip to the west. On the morning of March the 9th, 2000, Leah and Kara, her sister, spoke on the phone. Among other things, they talked about the uncertainty of Leah's future, and the conversation ended with the understanding that the two sisters would see each other soon. That afternoon, Leah talked to her friend and roommate, Nicole, and agreed to babysit with her the following day. When Nicole returned home from work that evening, she saw that Leah's Jeep was not in the parking lot. This wasn't particularly abnormal, since Leah didn't have a consistent schedule and would just come and go. However, when she didn't show up to babysit the next day, Nicole began to worry. 
She and her family and friends tried to contact her over the next few days without success. Kyra reported Leah missing on March 13th. This is when a strange note was found. Kyra and Nicole went into Leah's room to search for any clues, and they discovered that a lot of her clothing, as well as her kitten, were gone. They also found money and a note written in Leah's handwriting addressed to Nicole. The note reads, This is to cover bills for while I'm gone. Remember, everyone is together in thoughts and prayers, and time passes quickly. Have faith in me, yourself. Help Shep with Easter. Um, it's something, some type of Easter event that was going on. Give Peter my laptop. Give everyone my love. See you soon. Tell Kara don't worry, even though she will. P.S. There are cookies in the freezer. And circled to the side of the letter was April 23rd on the road. No, I'm not suicidal. I am the opposite. Remember, Jack Kerouac is how she had it spelled with a smiley face. Tell Nikki I meant to come, but I had no choice. She'll understand. Tell Melissa she could stay in my room if she wants to. And there's a picture of the note here. The one thing that stood out to me about this note out of everything, give Peter my laptop. Now, um, why would she be giving away her belongings if she's saying she's planning on coming back pretty soon? She doesn't say when, it just says, give everyone my love, see you soon. But then she also says, tell Nikki I meant to come, but I had no choice. So, I'm assuming that Nikki was the person that she was going to help babysit. And what? why did she have no choice? Leah had also drawn a picture of a Cheshire cat. The smile, if you know Alice in Wonderland, and they said that she was a fan of Alice in Wonderland, and she wondered, her sister wondered if the the drawing had a deeper significance. I kind of wondered if that wasn't the cat that always disappears and reappears. I feel like it might have been her way of saying, I'm disappearing now, but I'll reappear again later. Leah's family and friends were unsure of what to make of all of this. All of their attempts to contact Leah continued to fail. Her cell phone records would later reveal that she hadn't been using her phone since she left North Carolina, and it's unclear whether she even brought it with her. Now, some of you may remember the story about the young man in the movie Into the Wild in the book. This is very similar to what happened to him the young man who ended up dying in Alaska because of starvation. Um, he went on this quest, this, this uh, soul-searching journey to figure out what was going on in his life. A lot of people believe that he had had a break with reality, maybe some type of bipolar he was a top student and a top athlete, but he left behind all of his possessions and gave away his entire bank account of $24,000, and he just went off. He, he was the son of a wealthy family, and he went off on this um, search, and he ended up in Alaska. This sounds very familiar uh, similar to what's going on with this girl. I think she had decided maybe the death of her parents, maybe that just said to her, you know, life is short and to just spend all your life being educated and working and paying bills and paying rent is not living. So maybe she decided I'm going to live now. The fact that she had turned off her cell phone meant that she just, didn't even really want to be contacted. This was something she wanted to do on her own. Her sister said that she was always trying to discover her direction in life. By the time Leah was 22, she had lost both of her parents. 
She's getting ready to graduate college, but she felt really lost and didn't really know what she wanted to do in life. So her departure was not a total surprise. Several weeks earlier, Leah had talked to her roommate about taking a cross-country trip. She actually had talked to her about going with her, but her roommate said that I was working and I just didn't have the money. I, I couldn't just up and leave and get in the car and just take off on, without any notice. So the paper trail and security footage... Leah's financial records show that she'd withdrawn thousands of dollars on March 9th and that her debit card was used to book a hotel room in Memphis, Tennessee. Over the next few days, she'd make several food and gas purchases at a gas station in Brooks, Oregon. I guess this was the last place that she had stopped to buy gas. That was on March 13th. And there's no use of her debit card after that. Security camera footage from the gas station showed Leah at just before 1 a.m. She was alone and there seemed to be no signs of distress or any indication that she was worried about anything. However, she did look out the door into the parking lot before handing something to the cashier. Investigators later estimated that the vehicle had likely been going about 40 miles per hour when it went off the road and rolled several times before coming to a rest at the end of the embankment. With a crash of this severity, law enforcement felt that any occupants would have been badly hurt, but there was no one in the Jeep. But there was no blood or any signs of injury. The windows were broken and blankets and pillows had been hung over them, perhaps suggesting that the vehicle had been used as a shelter following the accident. Um, that does sound strange. It's like she was probably there that night, maybe more than one night, and this might be the reason why she put these blankets in the windows to try to block out the cold air. Leah's checkbook, guitar, CDs, her passport, and other belongings were scattered around the Jeep and in the nearby woods. Some of her clothing was found tied to trees, and a small amount of male DNA turned up on one particular article of clothing. It's... Um, Except for the fact that these blankets and pillows were in the windows, I would wonder if she was already dead when the Jeep went over the embankment. Now, that being said, if, if a man, maybe she picked someone up hitchhiking or maybe someone overtook her and, and carjacked her and raped her or whatever else might have happened, would they not have just left her body in the Jeep? To make it look like it was just a wreck. So that doesn't make any sense about where was her body. A camera with an undeveloped roll of film was found among Leah's possessions. Kara and Heath, this was her brother, had the film developed. But, but they found only pictures taken the previous winter. It seems as though Leah had not taken any pictures along her road trip. Leah's kitten was missing as well, but a hat, but an empty cat carrier and cat food were still inside the jeep. Her mother's engagement ring, which was known to, which she was known to wear, was discovered beneath the vehicle's floor mat. That was a very sacred item for her, said her roommate. I don't care what kind of emotional state she was in. Unless she was out of her mind and just didn't realize what she was doing, she never would have taken that ring off and left it behind. Altogether, $2,500 in cash and jewelry was found at the scene, indicating that if foul play was involved, robbery was not the motive. Kara and Heath flew out to Washington to search for their sister. 
Two men recalled speaking to Leah at Elephant and Castle, a restaurant in Bellingham, Washington, on the afternoon of March 13th. All three were seated at the counter. According to the men, Le Leah began to talk about her road trip. One of these men said that she left the restaurant alone. However, the second man claimed that she left the restaurant with another man that he said he heard her call Barry. Police produced a sketch of Barry based on the witness's description. However, because no one else who had been in the Elephant and Castle that day could even say that they remembered seeing this man, investigators believe that the story of Barry is either unreliable or made up. I would have asked the question of uh, people who were working that day. Did these two men leave the restaurant around the same time that she did? And this was the year 2000. Did they have any kind of camera system set up or anything? A movie ticket stub from a theater in Bellingham was also found with Leah's belongings. Now, there was an alleged sighting in Everett, Washington. A week after the Jeep was found, the Whatcom County Sheriff's Office received a call from a man that said he and his wife had seen Leah at a gas station in Everett. They said that the woman they saw was reportedly disoriented and unable to give her name when asked. For unknown reasons, the unidentified caller seemed to panic and hung up the phone. Authorities believe this tip was credible. Why did this person panic and hang up the phone while they're giving the just, you know, saying that they believe that they saw this young woman after she had been um, missing? The search for Leah continued for two weeks using helicopters, dogs, and metal detectors due to the metal rod in her leg. But no sign of the missing 23-year-old was found. Sergeant Kevin McFadden of the county sheriff's office said, we brought in dogs and we did search and rescue and did a complete grid search. But we were unable to find any indication that anybody had left the vehicle. So, it says here that they, there was a suspicion that the engine had been tampered with. For reasons that are still unclear, Leah's Jeep was not fully processed for evidence during the initial investigation. In 2006, new detectives took over the case and examined the vehicle. They discovered an unidentified fingerprint under the hood, and even more concerning, the starter relay wire had been cut. So they discovered that the starter relay wire had been cut, allowing the vehicle to accelerate without pressure being placed on the gas pedal. They believe that the engine tampering must have been done by someone who was knowledgeable about cars. Investigators had already believed that the accident was staged. Well, it's, it, I, I guess that's possible. I guess they tied these clothes to the trees and put these blankets and pillows in the windows to make it look like she had stayed there for several days. But they did believe that the accident was staged. And once they discovered that the engine had been tampered with, this confirmed their suspicions but they still don't know who was responsible for that. And my question is, why did they not process the vehicle at the time when they first found it? Law enforcement tracked down one of the men who had spoken to Leah in the restaurant before she went missing, the one that claimed that she left the restaurant with someone named Barry. This man happened to be a mechanic. Now, here we go. Back to my theory is it possible that he followed her 
from the restaurant. I don't know if there was any um, bank card information saying that maybe she had gotten a hotel room or something that night. And maybe he followed her there. His fingerprint didn't match the one found under the hood. His DNA was tested and compared to the DNA found on Leah, Leah's clothing, but the results were never released to the public. Well, his DNA was either on her clothing, which he could have just said that he might have touched her in the restaurant before she left, or his DNA wasn't found. Why did the police not release that? In 2014, a mummified body was found in the same region that Leah's wrecked vehicle had been found. The remains showed striking similarities to Leah, such as the height. It was estimated that she was about five foot five, as well as a metal rod in the right femur, the same place that Leah's metal rod had been placed. A trace of the lot number showed that the rod had been shipped in a batch in 1998 when Leah had her own metal rod placed. However, in a very bizarre turn of events, this was not Leah's body, or at least they claim that this was a male body. Experts determined that the body belonged to a male aged 33 to 55. The Doe's profile has been removed from NamUs, indicating that this was probably that he was probably identified, and no further information on those remains were ever released to the public. Leah Roberts' disappearance has been featured on Unsolved Mysteries and disappeared, and this resulted in many fresh tips, although none have ever been helpful enough to find her. Her case is open and active. She is missed by her family and friends, who still hope one day to have definite answers. Until then, the circumstances surrounding Leah's accident as well as what happened to her, are still a mystery. There is a Facebook page called Bring Leah Roberts Home. It is not affiliated with Leah's family, but it was created with the hopes that someone out there would come forth with some information about what happened to her. Investigators still don't know what happened. Two weeks after she left, her Jeep was found wrecked down an embankment in Washington State. A couple who were jogging along Canyon Creek Road came upon the Jeep, and it was in an isolated area. And this was a short distance from the Canadian border. Her belongings, including her shoes, clothing, books, checkbook, and guitar, were discovered around the Jeep, and inside, cat food was found, a gas receipt, and a movie stub for the movie American Beauty from Wellingham, Washington Movie Theater was also discovered. Robbery did not appear to be a motive, as there were several thousand dollars found inside the Jeep. Leah's car remained in the possession of investigators for several years. In 2006, it was re-examined, and it was discovered that a wire to the starter relay had been cut. This would have allowed the car to accelerate without anyone pushing the gas pedal. This confirmed the suspicions that no one had been in the car when it left the road, and thus it had been purposely wrecked. They found a fingerprint under the hood and some male DNA on Leah's clothing. If Leah was traveling to remote areas, there was a good chance that she might have encountered wildlife that could have killed her. However, I don't think very many people believe that she was actually ever in that Jeep when it wrecked. 
And had she been in that Jeep when it wrecked, she would either have been seriously injured to the point that she probably couldn't have gotten up and walked away from that. If she had walked away from it, Obviously, there were other people in the area. It wasn't that remote because it was a jogging. There was a jogging path nearby. This was part of a national park or close to the national park, so there would have been cars on the roadway. She could have flagged down help. Perhaps she staged the accident. It seems as though her mental state regarding materialism which goes along with her purpose of her journey, could explain that she wanted to fully embrace Jack Kerouac's journey. Perhaps she ditched everything material and went to the mountain to complete her journey. At this point, I would think possibly an animal attack or suicide, but where was her body? And did the family, when when it was this this mummified body with this right femur rod as she had did they ever ask for a better examination of those remains they determined that this was a male but and could it be possible that this person's body that was found was her unsolved mysteries added a little more to this they have that she has a beauty mark on her upper right lip and a surgical scar on her right hip. I would also assume that she has scars on her leg from where she had this metal rod placed in her leg. And I am still wondering about this mummified body that they found with a rod in its right leg with the batch number that came from the same batch number that her femur um, rod that was put into her leg has on it. And I, that, that's such a coincidence for this to have happened on the opposite ends of the country. It's just, I wonder how well they really examined the DNA of that body and if there's any possibility that they could ever re-examine because this person, this unidentified person was taken off of NamUs, which usually happens once a body has been identified. A friend of hers named Susie says that Leah was a very awesome person. Everyone loved her. But you know, she was very private as well. So she didn't tell anyone that she was going on this trip. She had talked about it with one of her other roommates and had discussed the possibility of her roommate going with her, but the roommate said she couldn't take off from work. Leah found comfort in the writings of the uh, Beat Generation author Jack Kerouac, who wrote about the free-spirited road trips he took across America. Leah's favorite was called The Dharma Bums. It's a story that encourages the reader to leave behind their materialism of their life. And part of the book takes place at a forest fire lookout on Desolation Peak in Mount Baker in Washington State. A friend of Leah's confirmed that she had talked about visiting this location. It appears that Leah decided to turn her dream into a reality. With just three months left before she was to graduate from college, she packed up most of her cherished belongings and her cat and took off 3,000 miles across the country. Leah's family and friends filed a missing persons report and checked her bank records for activity. She had made several cash withdrawals tracing a route toward the west coast. It took her only three days to get to Oregon. Leah's sister Kara decided to see what she could find at her sister's house. This is when she discovered the note that said, I'm not suicidal, I'm actually the opposite. 
So she wanted her family and friends to know that she wasn't depressed. This wasn't a trip to go off somewhere into the wilderness to commit suicide, as some people suggested. She was on a search. She didn't graduate from college. It was almost like she just thought, I'll come back maybe. Maybe she thought she would come back later and finish and graduate. And right now she just wanted to explore what other possibilities there were to life. That's what it sounds like. Her friend and her roommate said, as long as I've known Leah, she always had her mother's engagement ring. It was her most prized position. And the car, and when we discovered that the ring had been found in the car, to me, it was a bad sign. I think that they believe that someone, and, and I spoke earlier about this man that she had talked to in this restaurant, that he was a mechanic, and the police believed the car had been tampered with. It's a good possibility that he did follow her, and it's also a possibility that someone else witnessed her talking about this trip, talking about where she was headed to, someone else in that restaurant. This man did talk, this man did give this, uh, he did tell the police that she left the restaurant with another man named Barry. And no one else talked about that. No one else said, yeah, we saw her with another man walking across the parking lot, getting into her car. It's also possible that she went into another store or restaurant or some other business after she left this restaurant and someone in there overheard her discussing her trip. We can't rule out foul play. When you don't see anybody for a year, but there's no evidence to indicate what has happened. We did process the vehicle for your typical evidence, such as hair and blood, but there was nothing indicating that there was anything that had happened. Another theory is, is that she could have crossed over into Canada on foot, but she didn't have her passport. Some believe she may have been a Jane Doe and had been taken into some local hospital, but you would think that they would definitely have contacted the police. Perhaps Leah Roberts was really inspired by her author, Jack Kerouac, and left her former life behind. I just don't really believe that. I believe that people that do this type of thing I believe she was going through this kind of emotional crisis in her life because of her parents both dying so close together. She was getting ready to graduate from college. She wasn't really sure that she wanted to follow this career path. I think she went on this journey. I think she planned to stay a few days, maybe longer. Uh, she wasn't a survivalist, so I don't think she was out there in the wilderness trying to survive. And I think something happened to her before she, her Jeep ever went over that embankment. I personally keep going back to that man in the restaurant. I really do think that he followed her. I think that she was taken, I think her car was driven out there and gotten rid of without her ever having been in it. I think she was taken someplace else, probably very far away from where the car was found. And police just weren't searching for her in that, in other locations. I think she would have come back. I don't think her intentions were to just give up her entire existence. She had a brother and a sister. She had friends, and I think she would have come back. There was one reporting. A man said that he and his wife had seen Leah at a gas station 30 miles from Seattle. This was one week after she disappeared. Um, 
He hung up before the police could get any information from him. I think this was to throw the police off. I think this was probably the person that took her. And I think that he called and reported this to throw them off. But I do appreciate all my uh, subscribers. I appreciate everyone who watches. And um, thanks for watching.